In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to achieve this film strip style transition inside Premiere Pro. Let's hop right into it. In your project bin, go down to this new item icon, create an adjustment layer. Hit okay. Change the speed and duration. So right click, go to speed and duration. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna make this transition two seconds long. Right here we have hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So if I wanna switch this to two seconds, I'm gonna change that four to a two, and I'm gonna get rid of this 23, hit okay. And now this adjustment layer is two seconds long. Pull this down and we wanna center the adjustment layer to this edit point. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I know the exact center of the adjustment layer? Well, one way to do that is to take this clip, move it all the way to the beginning of your sequence. And since my sequence is starting on zero, I know that if I take my playhead right to the one second mark with the clip highlighted, I can hit the M key and that will create a marker. Now it's really easy to click and drag and snap the center of the adjustment layer right here. One other thing you might want to do at this point is deselect the adjustment layer and hit M again to create a marker at the top of the timeline. This will help you find the middle of the transition while we're applying all these effects. And speaking of the effects, let's go ahead and head to our effects window. Here is a laundry list of effects that we're going to be adding to this adjustment layer to achieve our film strip transition. First, let's look up levels and drag that onto the adjustment layer. And since you probably already know how to look up effects and drag them onto clips, here's the rest of the effects that you'll need to put onto the layer in this order. Now, this may seem like a lot, but once we break it down, it'll make so much more sense. The first thing we wanna start with is offset, and this will give us our basic motion of the transition. In order to animate this, let's take our playhead to the beginning of the adjustment layer, go to shift center two and click the stopwatch or toggle animation. Now move your playhead to the very end of the clip and you could try and manually find the right place, but I like to be exact. And the way that you can find an exact stopping point is by going up to your sequence, sequence settings, and looking that your frame size is 1920 by 1080. That's mine, it could be something different for you. Now, knowing that my vertical dimension is 1080, all I need to do is take 540 plus my vertical dimension, which is 1080 equals 1620. So if I were to put 1620 right here, it would shift it by one frame, but I wanna go three frames. So I'm gonna do another 1080 and another 1080, 3780. It will create another keyframe and it doesn't look like anything happened to the frame, but as I click and drag, you can see that we've hit this rolling shutter about three times and it arrives exactly where I need it to. It's also worth noting that in the program monitor, your playback quality should be set to full. If it's anything less, when you scrub through the adjustment layer, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of iterations of those frames. So make sure that it's on full. The next thing we wanna do is add more of a dynamic motion to this instead of linear. So I'm gonna hit this little down arrow, highlight both keyframes, right click, go to temporal interpolation, ease in, right click again, temporal interpolation, ease out. Now we have an exponential curve to the animation, but I wanna make it a little bit better. I'm gonna click and drag these handles so it kind of peaks right here where our marker is. So now our example looks like this. And since we have this basic motion down, we can add all of these other effects in to add more depth to our transition. The next one I'm going to add is edge feather. Go to amount, toggle on animation, and I wanna make sure that this starts at zero. Hit our marker here, go to 100. Then we go to our last frame, create another keyframe, take that back down to zero. So it goes zero, 100, zero. And you can see how this is starting to look like the beginning example. Next, we wanna add some directional blur. And again, we wanna to go to blur length and create three keyframes, one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end. I'm gonna go back to the middle, and this is completely up to your personal preference how much of a blur length you want. You could go something extreme, but for this, I think subtlety is the key. Maybe I'll go something like, I don't know, 33 is a good number. And the blur doesn't exactly match the motion that we've set over here with our offset. So what I wanna do is click this little down arrow. Again, I'm going to highlight all of my keyframes, right click, ease in, right click, ease out. I wanna take this curve and match the curve down here. So I'm gonna click and drag this handle so it starts to match. It doesn't have to be perfect but at least the blur matches the movement of the offset. One other thing to note is the direction of the blur. Right here, we're going up and down, but if I were doing something side to side, I would switch this to something like 90, and then my blur would then be horizontal. But since I'm vertical, I wanna keep this at zero. Now, I wanna go down to lens distortion, 
Same thing, we wanna create three keyframes for curvature at the beginning, middle, and end. I'm gonna click this to go back to my middle. And there's two ways that you could take this. If you go negative, it will kind of distort the image around the center, or if you go positive, it creates this spherical effect, like you're kind of condensing it down into a sphere. And for this one in particular, I wanna to go to this sphere. And you may be asking yourself like, hey, what about all of this white on the edge of the image? And we can get rid of that by going to our fill color and changing it to black. Now we have something like this. Getting pretty cool, right? It looks like it's going to an old school television, like a tube television. One thing I am noticing though, is that I have a really harsh edge on the top and bottom and a soft edge on my side. And this is where we wanna take that same edge feather that we created, right click, hit copy, and I'm going to right click and paste it. Now I wanna take this edge feather and put it in between my offset and my lens distortion. Now we have a soft edge on the top and the bottom and we get something like this. Now that we have that all set, let's move up to the effects that we haven't adjusted. The first one being Gaussian blur. I like to add some pops of blurriness as the video pulls away from the frame. And I think of this as if you have a projector on a wall and you're trying to find the perfect focus of the thing that you're projecting onto the wall. If you've ever used a projector, whenever you turn it on and place it on the wall, it's probably not in focus. So I like to mimic that right here. So as it pulls away, I'm gonna click my blurriness and maybe go up to something like five. And I wanna make sure that I start at zero, then just really hit a pop of blurriness right here. Go a couple more frames and then go back down to maybe like 10 and then two. And here's where the directional blur is gonna come into play. And I don't wanna add too much blurriness. So I'm gonna go down to zero. As it gets closer to the screen, maybe I'll bring back in some blurriness. So now you're left with something like this and you can adjust these as need be. Another thing to really sell this effect is, again, thinking of a projector and film on that projector, you see light passing through the film. So with these levels, I want to adjust or toggle the animation of the gamma. So I'm gonna click that and as it pulls away, I'm just gonna flare up the brightness of the picture and just add some flickers in here of light. I'm just manually adding these pulsations of light here. So now we have something like this. Oh man, that's so cool. And that's a vertical version of this transition. If you wanna do something to the side, you could take everything that you just created I'm gonna hold Option or Alt on Windows, click and drag this over to duplicate it on top of this set of clips. The first thing we need to adjust is our offset. I'm gonna restore this back to 540 on the last keyframe, and we need to adjust this 960. I know that I'm 1920 by 1080. If I take 960 minus 1920, we get negative 960, negative 2880, and I'm gonna stop at negative 4800. Let me put that in here and notice that it kept my same curve because I didn't delete this keyframe. And right now we have something like this. Another thing that I wanna show you is the lens distortion. So instead of kind of collapsing in on itself, let's take it and expand it across the frame. So instead of going positive, let's go negative. So maybe negative 10, so it goes vroom. And instead of vertical directional blur, we need to switch this to horizontal. Instead of zero, now we're gonna hit 90 and notice that the blur is going 90 degrees. And our final result is this. Pretty neat, right? Well, the effects and transition that you just saw with these adjustment layers is the same technique utilized in my preset pack. So right here, if I go to presets, Javier Mercedes transition pack, and I have a whole film strip section, instead of using adjustment layers here, if I wanted to do this same movement down, I have film strip down. So you do A on the first clip and B on the second clip. So I would do film strip down A on clip one, film strip down B on clip two. The same thing goes for the whole horizontal thing. So we went to the left. So if I went film strip left A, on the first clip right here and film strip left B 
B on the second clip. And you can see a lot of the same techniques that I just taught you utilized with the presets within my preset pack. So if you wanna achieve these transitions for yourself, this is the tutorial, or if you want to save some time and just use my preset pack, a link to that is in the description. Everything that I put into my preset pack, I'm just creating videos on how to do them in Premiere Pro. So if you want to do them for yourself, you can, or if you wanna get the preset pack, you can. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.